In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to color in this detailed owl using Sharpie markers and Crayola colored pencils. My goal is to demonstrate that you can create gorgeous, eye-catching art using very affordable art supplies and easy coloring techniques. Hi, I'm Tania, and if you'd like to color along with me, you can find this owl in my Groovy Owls coloring book. I'll post a link in the description below. When I originally colored in this owl for the cover of this coloring book, I used Copic sketch markers, which are known for being quite expensive. So in this video, I want to show you how you can achieve a similar look using much cheaper art supplies. I'll be using Sharpie's set of fine tip electro pop markers. Then I'll color on top of them using Crayola colored pencils, which I purchased in a set of 36. I'll also add a few extra touches using fine tip Posca paint pens, but if you don't have paint pens, you can always use gel pens instead. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for all these supplies myself, and I'm happy to recommend them. Sharpie's electro pop markers come in 36 colors, but today I'll only be using 15 of them. And out of the set of 36 Crayola colored pencils, I'll only be using 13 of the colors for this owl. Plus I'll use 6 Posca paint pens. Here you can see the color swatches for all the colors that I'll be using. Even if you don't have these exact brands, you can follow along by matching these colors to whatever supplies you have on hand. Let's begin! We'll start with the eyes. I'm using a yellow Sharpie to color in the owl's irises. And by the way, it's worth noting that Sharpies don't have the color names written on the markers or on the packaging, so it's kind of difficult to tell you which specific color that I'm using. So I'll just use general terms, like yellow, for example. Now we'll add colored pencil on top. The Crayola colored pencils do have color names written on them, so I'll let you know each Crayola color that I'm using. This technique that I'm about to show you is one of my all-time favorite coloring techniques. We'll be applying colored pencils on top of markers, which is a really easy way to create shading and ombres. So let's use our yellow-green colored pencil to create shading on top of the iris. Press lightly at first, and then press harder where the iris connects to the upper eyelid, so it looks like the eyelid is casting this greenish shadow. When you press lightly with colored pencils, the color is more see-through, and you can fade it out to the color underneath, in this case yellow. When you press harder with colored pencils, it makes the color more opaque. Now I add a tiny touch of green just under the top eyelids to make it a tad darker. Here's a handy tip for you. If you want to further smooth out the transition from the colored pencil to the marker, you can use the marker on top of that colored pencil area, like I'm doing here. This only works with alcohol-based markers, like these Sharpies. The alcohol in the marker acts as a solvent that dissolves the binder in the colored pencil, allowing the pigment to spread more easily. Sometimes the effect is subtle, but sometimes it can really help. Just be aware that when you use marker on top of colored pencil, there's always a chance that some of the pigment from the colored pencil will dislodge from the paper and stick to the nib of your marker. If this happens, you can usually remove the extra unwanted color by rubbing the marker nib on a spare piece of paper until the pigment particles from the colored pencil are removed from the marker nib. Personally, I only use markers on top of colored pencils if I'm using cheap alcohol markers, like these Sharpies, because I wouldn't want to run the risk of ruining the nibs of my more expensive alcohol markers, like my Copics. Now let's color the beak using a yellow Sharpie, and then we'll add some shading. I start with a yellow-orange Crayola colored pencil and lightly add some shading along the edges of the beak, as well as along the central line. Remember to start by pressing lightly with your colored pencil, and then gradually build up the strength of your color by layering and pressing harder. Now I'm using orange to create some darker, more saturated shadows at the top and sides of the beak. Then I add a touch of red-orange in the top corners. To finish the beak, I go over it one more time with yellow-orange to smooth out the transitions of color. Let's use a magenta sharpie to color in these hearts inside the owl's eyes. I'll also use this same color to color in these little half petals that go around the owl's pupils. Now I'm 
using this violet sharpie to color in the rest of the owl's eyes. It can be really tricky to color in these really tight corners using these fine tip sharpies. So if you want, you could use ultra fine sharpies for coloring in these types of tiny areas, or you could use really sharp colored pencils. And now I'll color in the rest of the eyes using this violet color as well. Now I'm using a red sharpie to color in the owl's eyelids. As you're coloring, always feel free to rotate the paper as much as you need to, to ensure that your hand, arm, and wrist are in the best position to comfortably color in each specific area that you're coloring. Next, I use a dark brown colored pencil to add some shading at the outer corners of the owl's eyelids. I press harder where I want it to be darker, and press more lightly in the areas that I don't want to be as dark. I also add some subtle shading along the bottoms of the eyelids. Then I use my white colored pencil to add some subtle highlights. Now let's use our paint pens to add some dots. I'm using a pink Posca paint pen to add tiny dots to these shapes around the owl's pupils. If you don't have paint pens, you could also use gel pens for this. Some brands of gel pens will show up better than others. It all depends on how opaque the gel pens are. When you use paint pens or gel pens, be sure to give them enough time to dry so that you don't accidentally smudge them. Now I'll use this pink Posca paint pen to add a row of dots to the upper eyelids. Next, I'm using a white Posca paint pen to add dots to the iris. It's really subtle on the yellow part of the eye, but you can see it more clearly on the greener part. It's a subtle effect that's a bit easier to see in real life, and it helps bring the eyes to life. I think it's looking pretty good so far. Let's move on to these stripey areas just above the eyelids. I'm gonna show you something really cool. I'm using this minty green sharpie to color in this whole area, going over these little lines. Now I'm using my yellow sharpie on top of the previous color, and look how it's changing the color underneath, making it look more like a yellow green. We'll do the same thing for the stripey area above, starting with this blue sharpie, and then going over top of it with yellow. Isn't it cool how it changes the color underneath to green? Now let's add some shading to these stripes. I'm using a sky blue colored pencil on the bottom stripes and a blue colored pencil on the top stripes. For these swirly shapes, I'm using yellow, orange, and pink sharpies. Then using a yellow-orange colored pencil to add some subtle shading. Let's continue to color in the areas above the owl's eyes. I'm using a purple sharpie to color in these shapes. And when that's done, I go over the bottom parts with a magenta sharpie. The effect is really subtle, but it adds a nice sense of variation. I'm using a pink sharpie to color in these parts, and then going over the bottoms with a red-orange Crayola colored pencil to create a sense of shading. Let's add some dots! I'm using a white Posca paint pen to add a few dots inside each of these shapes. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more of my art tips, techniques, and tutorials, subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a thing! And now I'll use a pink Posca paint pen to add dots to the tops of these shapes. Moving on, I'm using a blue sharpie to color in these pointy shapes. When it comes to coloring in tight areas like these, it helps to use a quick, light touch, and don't let the marker tip linger too long on the paper, because that can cause the ink to spread more quickly and go farther than you intended. 
Next, I use a blue colored pencil to add subtle shading along the bottoms of these shapes. I'm using a yellow Sharpie to color the pointy shapes just above the blue shapes, and using an orange Crayola colored pencil to add shading along the bottom edges. Now I'm using an orange Sharpie for these shapes, and then using my raspberry Crayola colored pencil to add shading. I press harder at the edges to make the color darker, and then lighten my pressure towards the centers of these shapes to make the color lighter. Next I'll use a white Crayola colored pencil to add some lines on top of the orange shapes. In addition to using colored pencils on top of markers to add shading and ombres, you can also use them to add patterns and textures. In this case, the white Crayola colored pencil isn't a very strong opaque white, so it might not show up that well on camera, but hopefully you still get the idea. So now I'm going to continue coloring in this owl with markers, colored pencils, and paint pens. By now you should have a solid idea of how to combine these three different media to create really eye-catching effects in your artwork. So I'm going to speed up the video and time lapse it for you, because if I showed you the entire coloring in real time, this video would be at least four hours long. I'll continue to talk as I show you the rest of the coloring so that I can share even more tips with you. And if you're coloring along with me, feel free to pause the video as much as you need to. If you're enjoying this video, please tap the like button, because that lets me know that you enjoy this kind of content. It also helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to more people, so I really appreciate your support. When it comes to adding your colored pencils on top of your markers, if you're not sure which color of colored pencil would look best on top of the marker, I highly suggest that you test out different combos on a spare piece of paper. Sometimes the results can surprise you, so it's always good to do a test first. When you come up with a marker and colored pencil combo that you really like, it can be helpful to make a note of it. You can create a color chart of your favorite combos in your sketchbook, for example. Now when it comes to adding paint pens on top of markers, the technique is pretty straightforward. I love that these Posca paint pens are so opaque that the color shows up really well on top of the markers. It's a fantastic way to add extra color on top of dark areas, for example. And it's an easy way to make your artwork look more complex. By now, you'll have noticed that I tend to add a lot of dots with paint pens. I just like the way it looks. You can also use paint pens to add other designs or patterns, like lines or zigzags or swirls. Definitely feel free to experiment with all the possibilities.
reason I love combining markers and colored pencils together in the same artwork is that it's a super easy way to create shading and ombres, which can help make your artwork look more dynamic and appealing. While you can blend markers to create similar effects, sometimes people, especially beginners, are daunted by the idea of blending markers because they've never done it before. So this is an easy workaround. Whether you're using water-based markers or alcohol markers, the techniques for adding colored pencils on top is totally the same. One easy method for choosing a colored pencil that will work well on top of a specific color marker is to choose a colored pencil that's in the same color family as the marker, but a bit darker. This is an easy way to create some shading. Here's an example. If you're trying this technique for the first time, let me know what you think of it in the comments. Now we're almost done coloring in this owl with markers, colored pencils, and paint pens. But given that I'm totally addicted to detail, at this stage, I like to look over my artwork and see if there are places where I can add even more dots. I consider this the finishing touch. It's such an easy and fun way to add more pizzazz to an artwork or a coloring book page. Sometimes people ask me how to know where to add dots and how many to add and how big they should be. I like to add dots wherever there's any place that feels a bit too blank. I like to add small dots, so I just fit in as many as I naturally can in each specific area. It's a rather intuitive thing, so the more you experiment with it, the more you'll gain an instinctive understanding of where to place the dots and how many dots to make. And now we're done! Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of this artwork that we just colored in using inexpensive markers and colored pencils compared to the cover artwork, which was colored in using very expensive Copic alcohol markers. As you can see, the results are quite similar. This just goes to show that you don't need expensive art supplies to create magnificent works of art. I hope you had a lot of fun coloring in this owl with me. If you enjoyed this owl video, I have another owl coloring video lined up for you right here. Check it out and I'll see you next time.